up, hi guys. I hope you're really, really well and everything's going really good. So this is going to be a hook joint angling with Rich Wilby. He has some amazing fisheries. He's an all-round angler and actually, you know, he loves all species. So that'd be interesting to have a chat with him. Um, so what's happened, what's occurred? Well, I've just done a little practice live feed because we've upgraded our internet, which means it should be a lot, lot, lot smoother and things should be a lot more clearer than it has been before. So hopefully now it'll work out it actually comes through a lot clearer. We won't have no stuttering. We won't have no stalling. Fingers crossed. We had a bit of hiccup for some reason when I was uh, trying to do jumping on with people. Everyone was fine. We got a good old Dax Miller, a good friend of mine. He popped on them in a live feed. For some reason, it kept on kicking him off. Um, I don't know whether that was my end or his end. Probably my end because mine's always a nightmare. John Irvin, hi buddy. Hope you're really well. Sorry we cancelled the match angling with John Irvin's uh, introductory course, the beginner's guide, but we're going to reschedule you for a couple of weeks' time, uh, John, and we'll get you back on to do an introduction on angling, uh, match angling. So John's going to chat about things like some of the baits they use, some of the processes that sort of goes in with match angling. So some of the rules, some of the uh, regulations you work for, some of the tackles, some of the poles, and just sort of a bit about the match, uh, match fishing experience, which obviously John is my wingman for UK angling as well and he can trust the whole 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 match side of things and we used to do UK angling match is at Alders Farm uh Alders I will say Alders Alders uh we used to uh it? There were quite a few places we used to do a little bit of circuit we had a few lads that used to join us and we used to raise a bit of money for Florence Night and Girl doing that so that was always really really awesome what have we done so more evening everybody, evening Neil, uh, evening Adrian, the integrator is very clear, brilliant, hope so and hope it stays. Hi Stu again, thank you for popping on earlier on, awesomeness. So, um, what have we had so far? We've had um, beginner's carping with Sam King, which is a wicked, wicked little thing. Uh, Sam's going to come back on in the next sort of three or four weeks to start doing more of an advanced, uh, advanced sort of live feed chat to try and help people out and give them a bit of information when it comes to carp angling. Uh, and then we've had... Julian Carl, oh no, Jason we're doing, doing some rigs with us, that was awesome, we're getting back on and do a bit more in-depth talk about maybe uh, lead setups and things like that and the pros and cons. Um, we have had Julian Cundiforth, he was a real pleasant to have, a pleasant guy to have on, 100%. I mean, my internet kept on freezing and cutting out and it took a while to get him on, but he, he stuck around and he, he kept on trying and, he, and he, he, he sat there and he worked with us to get us a nice live feed. He answered a load, a load of questions, which was absolutely bang on awesome, so I was really, really pleased that he took the time to talk to us. Um, hi Mark, how you doing buddy? I've had a good week. Yeah, I had a good week. Yeah, I've been working quite hard, doing a lot of things. Um, a lot of people don't realise I don't do UK angling full time. You know, we're a registered company, we're all legal, and we do all the bits and pieces. I'm actually a tradesman at heart, so I've long been a tradesman and also doing the fishing lake and running the fishery. Um, you know, I do everything else in between. We've got a good team behind us now, we're moving forward. Um, then we had Mike Smith from A Bite Out of Cancer. I'm really, really stoked because a few of the people that watch the live feed, we did muddle through it. It was a real hard one for me because the internet was really, really, really dodgy. So that's hence why I perfect hold for a couple of weeks and try to upgrade everything. But his story was heartful. You know, that's such a heartfelt um, story. And I was really, really chuffed to see that some of the guys that had watched the live feed with us I took the time to pop over to Mike's page and donate some money. So, you know, the guys that have done that, honestly, heartwarming, bless you, thank you. It means, it means a lot. As UK anglers, we like to say we uh, encourage, educate and inspire. And we love to support all the charities we can. I've been a little bit slack because there's a few, few charities I need to speak to. I'll, I'll touch base with them and I've not got back in, in touch with them as it were. So I need to sort of chase them up a little bit. Um, so, so far, so good. The internet's holding. Uh, everything's working really, really well so far. I stole a little light at the kids or misses in the kids' room. We do the TikTok, so I actually can see my face. I'm not a shadow, and you can see obviously, um, you know, if you can't <laughs> hear me very well, you can always see will it breed. Um, so hopefully, everyone's been doing really well. What's been going on with you, Kanglin? Loads. There's, there's always something going on with you, Kanglin. Doesn't, doesn't stop. Um, how, what's been going on with Dimmick's pit? The lake, the three-year lake I renovated from scratch and I've started getting it to a good stage and I've stocked it, I've worked it, I've built platforms on it. It's the unknown pit with big catfishing that people see and can't catch. There's big carp in there which people see and can't catch. There's a monster pipe that no one can catch. You know, uh, again, as always, until I see it on the bank in my hands, it doesn't exist. You know, we've we, we got to catch them. There's a great little... Uh, 
Oh, Dan Curtis, team member, went down a pit with a uh, Chris Hamilton consultant and they listened to what I said and they flicked out a troddy in his space. Actually, Dan Curtis, I don't know if you realise, that was my fishing spot. I've been baiting that for quite a while and he sort of stole it, but it's okay, mate. We don't mind. We're happy that he caught that little carp and it was a stunner. All the scales very dark back in, so I was really, really pleased. So, in regards to the pit, yeah, it's going really well. We are open. We have only limited amount of pegs because we're quite funny, especially with COVID going on. Uh, but the lake's doing really, really well. It's waking up. We've recarved it. We've removed reeds. We've redone swims. Dimmix, mate, is absolutely rammed. Rammed to the nuts with good sized rud. I'm um, trying to fit them out a little bit because Daxi uh, from Wild Farm gave me some good, good advice and he said I need to obviously try and thin some smaller ones out so the bigger ones can come forward. Yeah, Dan is a poacher. I'm going to call him Poacher Dan. He's called Spanner, Spanner Curtis at the moment, but he'll pop up. But, you know, we're going to, I'm going to call him Poacher Dan. That's going to be his nickname. Bless his little soul. Um, so, yeah, so the lake's going to absolutely bob on. I mean, the carp are moving around. The reeds are banging. And the best thing about that pit is so quiet. It's peaceful. You know, you don't have many people on there. It's all private. It's locked up. You know, it, it's just a, such a special place. Uh, and I've spent a lot of time in it. And like I said, I've told stories about the big, big common in there that I've seen on two or three occasions. You know, uh, it sort of pops up and cruises through. And, you know, even the other year, people were fishing it. And it was just literally people were sitting down there. And you, you, you're going to, you, you know, you sit, oh, Jesus. You sit there fishing and you, uh, your rod's around and you get a Bam, and I ram it, it, ram it, ram it, and it's pulling and pulling, and it just goes and goes and goes, and then go ping, and it, and it snaps. We had a cat fisherman down there who swears blind. He swears to me, it, he's an experienced cat angler, and he swears to me that he was down there with his rods up. We had two free pike, but he lost something that was, in his mind, 100% a catfish. Um, it was a Richard Catfish Lake. That's the thing. You go online, it's registered. You go back to the old MKA pages, and it says, go down Dimmocks and catch yourself a cat. So I don't know whether they're in there or not. I've not caught one. I've not got much experience of cat angling. However, we do have a man coming on very, very, in the next, I think it's Wednesday, we have a man coming on Wednesday called Dave Mutton. And he is by far a, an amazing, amazing catfish angler. Honestly, he's absolutely spot on when it comes to catfish. Uh, he's got, a, you can, he's got a, I think it's called The Friendly Fisherman, or you can find Dave Button, Mutton on, uh, on, on Facebook. He catches an amazing array of big, big, big catfish. Uh, and he uses the product, and he's a very, very honest guy. And he's always supported me since day one. So this is why he's going to come on, and he's going to give a beginner's guide to catfishing. So everything you need to know to get involved with catfishing. And he's at the end of the phone on the messenger, so you can actually message this guy and have a chat with him, and he will turn around and give you honest opinions and advice on venues, on tackle, on pricing, everything. And on top of that, he's also an amazing, amazing, amazing perch angler. If you look at his profile, he's got some big, big, big perch. So he'll crack on with that as well, and he'll give you lots of advice. So we're going to get Dave on quite regularly to be my, what I call, predator expert, because he was also going to do... Oh, yeah, I just want to take a quick, quick... Uh, my friend Stephen Hellier, Hellier, I always say his name, Hellier, Hellier, who helps me produce all the UK and clothing and, and, and brand stuff. Um, his birthday uh, the other day, and kept it all, all quiet. So I want to say a massive, massive happy birthday to my good pal Steve. He's an old, he's, he must be an old git or something. He didn't want to tell anyone. He kept it very, very quiet. But happy birthday from me and everyone at UK Angler, mate. We appreciate all your help and everything you do. And it means a hell, hell of a lot to us. You know, you, you, you spend a lot of time producing products and you're showing me this. And he called me at the randomest times at night, at half 10, 11, 12 at night. Mark. Yes, Steve. Yeah, uh, 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 new hat, new design. I was like, Steve, slow down, Steve. No, but I want to bring this new jacket out. So, you know, he's got, he's got just as much enthusiasm and passion as anyone else I know. And what he doesn't know about clothing, how to design it, how the stitching works, how the things like that, it is just honestly immense. And I'm really, really pri privileged to have that chap helping us out on the UK Indian brand. Um, so, on top of that, so that's, that's that. So, we've got the, the lot of things coming up. We've got, uh, we've got, we had to get Chris Hamilton back on. We had to move all the, all the live feeds back a little bit because I dropped a you know, I dropped a clanger. My fault. Totally messed it up. The internet was playing up. Nothing was really working. Everyone was cutting out. And all I did was to try and shuffle people back and try and squeeze them back in where I could. Um, so we let Chris Hamilton uh, about uh, a day and a half of a fishery officer. And what this will be is not just the fact that people think fishery officers are bailiffs, uh, you know, they're there to protect the water, but they do lots more, you know, Chris will get called out at random at times to sort of tethered carp out and explain the rules of why certain venues will have certain rules. Like he runs the Beacon out on Mount Farm in, in Milton Keynes. This is a stunning lake. It's full of mates, some real big, beautiful carp, uh, which is Chris has been privileged to that has caught a few. And at the end of the day, you know, 
there's reasons why we, as fishery, uh, fishery owners, fishery officers, you know, uh, we do things how we do things. It's not just for the fish safety, it's for public safety and insurance purposes. And, and, and there's lots more involved in just slamming down random rules. I take a lot of advice from a good uh, guy, Trevor Price from Oldest Fishery. He's a great guy. He always gives me lots of advice, lots of support when I ask him about running Dimmocks. Uh, and so does Dax as well, Dax from Wild Farm. There's just two people I can call for any advice. And there's another guy who I haven't heard for a while, and I hope, hope he's really, really well, is my good pal, uh, Dave Rice. He owns the Alco Syndicate in Biggles Wade. That's an amazing, amazing venue. It's got a waiting list, but the guy's immense. He tracks his fish. He's got uh, things online that can tell you sort of what's coming out, where it's coming out. The great community. He's hand-built cabins on there. We have a lot of socials. Yeah, uh, and I love it. Yeah, Trev is an awesome guy. He's another guy that... On the mix pit, we have a little tackle shop, like a converted caravan. And the good thing about uh, Trev, he's he'll help me source this, help that, and he'll advise me. And I've got to say, everyone that helps me out in the UK angling world, not one of them asks for anything in return. Dax has never asked me for a penny. Um, Trev never asked me for a penny. Dave never asked me for a penny. Honestly, the guys are great. And we've been doing a little bit of work with uh, Newport Pagnell as well. Uh, we've been trying to, uh, try, and I know with COVID, certain things we can't do. So I've been trying to help buy, bump up the prizes for them. Because I know they've been doing a lot of charity stuff, raising money for Woodland Hospice. So what we've been trying to do is offer like the leg and offer some sort of bits of merchandise. I mean, we, you know, we do our best with what we got. And we're very, very honest. All our, all our tackle range are very honest. All the clothing, we're very, very honest. We don't, we don't piddle about. Uh, I don't lie and you know, I don't ball, ball crack about anything. There's no point. I, my dad told me, son, you've got to be a real, real smart guy to be a good liar. And he said, son, you're thick as shit, so don't bother trying. So that's it. From that day forward, I didn't tell a lie again because there was no point. So I hope everyone's doing really well and staying safe. I know Rich is a little bit nervous about jumping on the live feed with us because... He's a bit worried about the internet connection, which we always we all worry about that. I'm the worst for it. I mean, God, I was praying on the other one. But you're worried about the internet connection and things like that. So, um, you know, bless him. He, and I, I spoke to him on the phone a couple of times already, and I've explained how to get to the link and how to get on. And about seven o'clock, he's going to pop up on Wave, and then we're going to try and add him. But I just want to do a little bit of chat, to you guys, about what's been going on in the UK and the side of things. What's been going on with the clothing? What's been going on with all our products? What we've got planned for the new year? I mean, I'm hoping Touchwood all going well. I've been privileged enough to help a couple of more charities out. Uh, and I may, trying to finalise what's what, be able to start doing the coaching side so we can help encourage the youngsters and get them out of the bank as well. There's a nice initiative going on in Milton Keynes very soon that is all aimed at helping the children out. So that'd be awesome. John, yeah, he does. Honestly, I've never... I, if you, The thing is with Trev, if you go and speak to Trevor... No, no, I ain't get the family out, mate. Upgraded the thing. I'm still in the conservatory, mate. Until I move out and get a better place. Jesus Christ. Hi, Colin from York. How you doing, buddy? I hope you're staying well and staying safe and looking after yourself, buddy. Um, so, like I say, you know, we've we, we got a lot going on. And you know, I always, I, I waffle. I waffle and I talk and talk a lot. But we're very honest. So, yeah, we've got some new tweaks on the bait range as well, uh, which is absolutely amazing. We've got some things that we're lining up to do. Uh, everything just takes time. I mean, I think that we, I think we're one of the only brands. I think we're one of the only brands that are doing obviously match, predator, um, carp, you know, leisure. So we we try to produce everything slowly, but it take time. But it'll all come out in the end. And we try to keep things low. We try to keep prices low, which is quite important to us because. You know, don't get me started on this, but I believe everyone's got a right to fish, and I don't think no one should be price barred out of fishing. And what I mean by price barred out of fishing, I mean you should, if you haven't got, you, there should be a kit for everybody. You should be able to, you know, go fishing without feeling worried or concerned. Rich has put his little thumbs up, so he's going to be on very, very shortly. So when Rich comes on, we we'll have a relaxed chat and have a good sort of laugh, and he's going to say about his, he's got his own page and his own brand. I show support by buying Chris. Don't even start all round anglers cup. Eat, sleep, fish, repeat. I mean, you couldn't say it better, could you? I was going to steal his idea, but I think I might get done for copyright, so I'm not going to do that. It's rich. <laughs> so I'm going to try and start adding rich. I'm going to go find him. Let's find rich, rich, rich. Where is he? Two seconds, people. There he is. So I'm going to try and add rich now. Time for the pop on. But rich, if the signal goes, don't worry, mate. We've been able. To Quite a lot. Hey, there he is. Can you see me, Rich? <laughs> well, I can't believe it works. <laughs> yeah, I'm mate, good, Rich. I've been on ones oh. with just frozen. I'm sitting there going, 
Let's try this. There we go. <laughs> well, uh, nice one. It works. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you nice and clear, Rich. Don't worry, yeah. pal. Make sure my, let me just make sure my phones will turn up correctly. Well, I mean, I've got a few kids still, everything. There we go. So, Rich, how are you, buddy? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Very good. Uh, been a long day. Had a lot of work to do today. I've uh, been chalking my lakes up and uh, a few other jobs. Uh, so, yeah, I'm nice and chilled now. Had a beer. So, yeah, the <laughs> shower. So, yeah, I'm good. I'm really good. Cheers. So how's, how's, how's it been going? I mean, you've been doing obviously your uh, YouTube stuff. has got loads of content on there. You're regularly updating yeah, it. We were, what, uh, what's yeah, good, yeah. Rich, is you're all species, aren't you, Rich? You're all species. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and learning all the time still. Yeah, uh, I'm sort of, I suppose I'm a specimen hunter, but I'm a pleasure angler nowadays. Yeah, I, I, I do catch the odd nice big fish, but I just love fishing. Uh, more than now than you know I ever have done and uh, so a guy I used to work with uh, back in the day angling times a photographer uh, he sort of approached me in the first lockdown uh, I, I won the Drennan Cup which was great and he was like you need to do some videos a few others had said it so we uh, yeah so we talked it and then started doing it after sort of the first lockdown and yeah, it's been good. It's been good. It's been challenging. I've learned loads. YouTube's, uh, you know, it's very different to the other social media platforms. It's quite hard, actually, to get uh, established on YouTube. Uh, and we're, we're starting to make progress. We've just got a video out this evening, a big pipe mm. video. Uh, so we're trying to, it's also interesting to see what's, obviously carp are always popular, but I did a rud video and I think that was one of our most popular, some big ruds. So uh, we've got plans this year for maybe some sea fishing because I do a oh. bit of that and uh, yeah, just mixing it up and seeing what people like. Well, that's it. I mean, the world, I mean, I love carp fishing, but the world's just, if you go online, it's all carp, 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 carp. And I yeah. love carp angling. Yeah. I like to find out, find out about match angling. I like to find about, yeah, like, definitely. I keep things up on our little forums about, certain rigs for rud or certain rigs for tent or ledger floating people yeah, go exactly. what's that what's that and i'm like yeah. it's, it's like a basic rig for, to catch fish so i think people like yourself that are doing the youtube videos are starting to i think it's almost like without being rude like a ready-made carp fisherman so they, they yeah. go online again yeah. they go out and they don't realize all the other species you could be catching yeah no well it is well it's like uh life changes doesn't it as you get older and uh you know mm. time's more precious you don't have the time uh you know kids come along or whatever just you you will usually you end up with more responsibilities and carp fishing the biggest edge has always been time it's always and suddenly you haven't got 20 24 hours now seems like a huge long session uh so a lot of my fishing is short sessions and that's why I've taken uh, sort of specimen hunting a bit more. It's just suited my lifestyle more to nip out, uh, mm. like for a big dace. The other winter, I was trying for a big dace. And to be honest, uh, about 3 p.m. in the winter is their feeding time. So get all your jobs done. I work for myself, which is a you know a massive edge, so I can go when I want. But mm. 2 o'clock, drive down the river and fish for an hour and come home. And I'll... You know, I caught a couple of very big days dinner. And uh, anyway, but roach, everything's the same. You don't, you don't, w with other species, you don't have to go and sacrifice your whole life and, and ruin relationships and friendships. Mm -hmm. So uh, carp fishing, I love carp fishing. I make my living from carp fishing, but uh, my life, I haven't got time. I probably haven't even got the patience anymore for, for it. Not, not, you know, not going yeah. away, coming back after a weekend and... So yeah, I think I think uh, the, there's a shift towards other species because life is a little bit more hectic for everyone. Uh, to be honest, yeah. so what, what would you say your favourite species is, then, Rich? If you had to choose it, any it, any oh, fish, oh, honestly, changes like it'll be like <laughs> it'll be, as soon as you get to January, it'll be pike, 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 and then uh, mm -hmm. you know this now I'm obviously starting to think a little bit more about probably some. Uh, you know, tench and cruising mm. and a little bit of carp stalking and the beach starts fishing well near me. I'm on the East Coast, so uh, we get a lot of smooth hounds and stuff. So, you know, uh, that's all exciting and bass. It, it changes. Uh, it does change. Uh, pike, pike are up there. I've always pike fished since I was a kid and uh, 
you know, big pike uh, I'd never tire of hooking into one of those, I guess. Uh, but I mean, I love my roach fishing, but just autumn roach fishing. And uh, that's the great thing about fishing for everything. It's like mm. with carp fishing, like a lot of guys that just look forward to like April, especially this year, April, but like spring's the best time, isn't it? And, you know, when you fish for everything, you know, you can, every different species has a best time. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good thing about it. You can mix it up. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm the same. I mean, I mean, people, people think I just carp angle, but I, I do everything. I love everything. I mean, I used to finger fish the canal when I was a kid, catching the perch yeah. at the edge. You know, I, I love barbel fishing on the river. I love pike fishing. Honestly, yeah. I absolutely love pike fishing. I mean, yeah. I've got a rule in my venue that you have to be able to get a pike yeah. just before you can fish for them because some people just don't know. I mean, I've seen lads near on them and shank yeah. it in with them. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's pretty, We yeah. try and do it all days for people down the lake yeah. to learn how to do that. Definitely, um, yeah. And they're, they're looking at when they come in and a big old teeth and I think you put oh, a video right. up the other day with one. I think it was a chasing a law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was yeah. epic, Max. Yeah. That was epic. You Can have you have to check out my late my late the one we've just posted up, our new video is like if you like big pike, like I, I do catch a good pike. So but it's probably the best video we've done. So yeah, put a I'll let you put a link up or something. But it, it yeah. is uh it is a good video, but yeah, it's a uh, big pike. Uh, they're, well, they're they're more uh, they're rarer than they ever have been as well. So you know, yeah. yeah, they're under threat from everything pollution. You know, whatever we don't want to go down there, but they're under threat by, and uh, so yeah, they've become even more special. But uh, yeah. yeah, you know, it gets to this time of year and pike have spawned. So I forget about pike now for a while and move, move on. on to something else. Yeah. So like so. so it's, Oh, John's a match fisherman. He's a match fisherman. He, he runs a match fishing site. He hates pike. He hates them down the lake. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a miserable old tart. And he's, yeah, John, yeah, you're a miserable yeah. old tart. You'd rather catch a bream. Probably what you do, catch John. <laughs> Pack it in, son. I love but, a bream. I tell you, I do like a big bream. I caught a couple of real big ones the other yeah. year. And, uh, you know, bream fishing's nice. Bream fishing. Yeah, I've got, they, they picked yeah. on me the other week because I said I like bream fishing. You know, and yes. they, on, on our little team page, they just started spamming me with pictures of bream and laughing at me. But, yeah. No, I like a bream. Yeah, bream fishing. A good time coming up for some bream fishing, definitely. Yeah, I like a bream. What's your favourite method for the old bream fishing then, Rich? What's your favourite all I, rounder? I'll tell you what, you can't beat a method like one of them, in my opinion, a flatbed method feeder for both of my, I've had a couple of 16 pound bream and they've just been like method feeder. Real simple, real stinky uh, mix, lots of sort of molasses, uh, I use like they love worms, so they'd be like really fine chopped worm. And I put a lot of, uh, I've always been into bait. Like, obviously, I used to make a lot of bait and I worked with a couple of bait companies on. But uh, so I put that kind of, I don't know, I put that into my ground baits uh, yeah. and like bream. So I make the breamiest ground bait and uh, I'll spend like an hour making it. And I swear it makes a difference. If I get that in front of bream, I'm catching them. So. Well, that's yeah, it. I mean, it's more of, a, feeders. more of a reward, yeah. isn't it, when you're doing it yourself? When you're not buying yeah. out of a packet and you're actually doing it, it's, yeah, it's yeah. more of a reward. Yeah. I like it. It's like a recipe, mixing it all up in a bucket and it stinks. And then uh, you get that <laughs> right round of feeder. And a little, I use a little, uh, like a fake maggot or a fake bit of plastic cord, something small or, you know, 10 mil boily. And just, you know, those little feeders, to be fair, they, you know, they, they ding out miles and bream just find them I've, I've chucked them into 15 foot of featureless water because i've seen a bream roll and 10 minutes later it's gone like they find it like bream are easy to catch uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know yeah. the better your bait is the quicker you can you know they respond quickly to bait don't they you know carp, yeah, carp yeah, can be a little bit more cautious but uh yeah yeah, yeah i love to i'm gonna definitely do a bream uh, a bream video in the uh, next couple of months probably yeah oh awesome so Rich, Rich, a little bit, what got you into fishing, Rich? When did you start? What sort of age did you start dabbling? Or yeah, was it a right, so, thing, uh, or? I sort of started uh, fishing like the farm ponds. I grew up, I'm in the countryside, grew up in mm -hmm. Norfolk. So yeah, just uh, I got dropped off at little ponds from my friends, bike to ponds. So mm -hmm. yeah, catching cruising, gudging, stickleback, then down the river, yeah, catching perch. And so yeah, I've always, yeah, pond dipping, uh, I fished, I match fished as a junior. I was pretty good. I I I done alright. I won like probably the biggest 
junior match in the county, uh, but then like the cart bug uh, got to me sort of, I was at like the right, like early 90s, cart fishing was going mental and I was at that age, you know, and I could start doing nights and so that, that sort of happened. Cart fishing took over, but yeah, I always pike fished a bit still every winter and, uh, and uh, yeah, and I ended up, I ended up a lot. I actually went to, well, I did a degree in art. I was actually an artist okay. for a while uh, in a form. Okay. But I ended up, I ended up going to Spa Show uh, about 22 and I did a two year sort of degree uh, in fish. I was always going to, you know, I always wanted to be in water. So I did like a fishery science degree there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that sort of led to quite a few different, uh, I've worked uh, in the trade now for quite a while, you know, 20 years. 20 yeah. years I've worked in the trade, yeah. And you've got, and you've got some of the best venues to show for it. Yeah, so yeah, we sort of, uh, yeah, that I think always, always the dream was to have a, a fishery, but, uh, you know, when I finished, like, uh, you know, my sort of degree, you know, I, I couldn't just build a fishery. So I had several jobs and got a lot of experience and, yeah, I worked in the media, worked for tackle companies, uh, but, you know, eventually I managed to sort of, uh, finance uh, and create a fishery yeah oh, yeah. yeah and then it's uh i was telling chris sambleton about it the other day he didn't really understand where it was or anything like that yeah. when i told him about what was it in there he um yeah he had, he had a heart he, he had a heart attack you know yeah um right, so right. yeah so is anybody if anyone's got any questions for rich if you could just pop them up as we roll through and i'll, I'll clock them as we go and i'll ask him like we did with, with jules or anything like that just so obviously if anyone wants to ask anything or on any species as well yeah. uh, that'd be awesome so what would you yeah. overall what's your overall best sort of memorable capture would you say then rich like of all the fish you've caught all the pike the carp the perch the big big rod what is the one you would say stands out the most i had one that i can't uh, talk about yet but uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll find <laughs> out soon you'll find out soon about that one but uh i i don't know not that oh there's been hundreds but uh I don't know. Each one's special, isn't it? And sometimes, uh, I'll, t I'll tell you, one of them, uh, one of them wasn't a fish I caught. It was just, I was with a friend and, and they caught a really special fish. Uh, and it was a real, uh, sounds cheesy, but it's a real good moment. We put a lot of effort in together and I was, I was genuinely, I was just as happy watching him catch it. I knew, I knew, I knew what it meant. If that yeah. I, I knew what it meant and yeah we both had a good moment there so that was yeah. that was as good as any of the the big fish i've caught uh yeah. you know so but yeah there's been some good ones and some lucky ones you always remember yeah. like lucky and then ones that you spent uh you know you put loads of uh loads of effort and and time in for and some of the big fish i've caught i haven't put time and effort in they've just i've just timed it right, right. i've just I found the venue. Uh, I've got. I've, found, I've got on the venue. I've gone there. I've caught it. Not because I'm great. I just. I've just gone there on the right week. And then other ones have just other memorable catches of, you know, God, you know. I, I mean, I I've lost fish at the net, and then it's taken me, you know, so much effort to get that chance again. Uh, it's all a roller coaster, isn't it? Uh, with yeah. it all, and you have good runs, and sometimes you just feel like everything you're doing isn't working and uh that's that's, that's the right. issue of it. i mean yeah. i don't call anything properly in ages i swear but when you do everything else you sometimes haven't got time i ain't got the time to sort of get down and fish as much i mean yeah one of the best fish i caught was from my own little lake i mean i've, I've renovated it stopped it i haven't caught nothing for a year and i caught yeah. this tiny little like mirror it was tiny it wasn't big only about three yeah. four pounds yeah. but it's a better view than ever mate to do that a couple yeah. of questions fans ask have you ever done any sturgeon fishing rich and yeah, your catfish yeah. cat oh, no. video was great. Yeah, Sturgeon. So uh, I, I missed out. Uh, years ago, I got a free uh, trip to Canada. All uh, to I was going to do a big uh, like news spread on it, and I and we had we had one holiday booked. My family, my and my missus had booked that week, so I missed out on uh So I really want to go to Canada one day. Uh, I always I was like, God, that one week. Uh, but. My friend has a private little lake with some big sturgeon in, so I've I've have just caught a few big sturgeon locally, luckily, in a little private lake. Where I think Fox filmed with me uh, this year there, and uh, they they go to about eighty pound, which is 
not huge for sturgeon, me. but for his pond, you know, it's a little pond and they're big, you know, they tail walk out when you hit them. Mm. And uh, I have a couple of goes there a year, which is, it's just fun, just fun. Uh, and you'll be, will you be doing some videos on it then, Rich, for people? We, yeah, I think we might. We did, so we did, Fox filmed me uh, uh, there. So we might do our own video maybe this year, but I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't, it's one of them. It's a bit Marmite. Some people just think it's a bit, it, I just see it as fun fishing. You know, they're, they're just, uh, just, you know, but some people like, you know, cause it's a private lake, you know, I, to be honest, like, I don't know. I've, I've, in the, in the last couple of weeks, I've just had a bit of trolling on the social media <laughs> as well. Welcome to the uh, world. I get trolled all the yeah. time. People always pick on me. It's not, it's time. not just, it's not just social media. I think it's just like uh, because I've run, you know, I run fisheries. They're they're quite good fisheries. There's loads of good well, fisheries. Well, they're quite good, Rich. Uh, they're excellent fisheries, Rich. So don't don't. They're good fish. Don't yeah. Touch them. No, and, and it's just, but unfortunately, they're exclusive. Uh, I've run syndicates, uh, but the people who can't fish them instead, you know, they like to run them down or make stuff up. So I've had a little bit of that to deal with. And it's just, oh, mate. it just grinds on me. You know, it's just don't like, you know what? You know. don't get you, honestly, like I had people yeah. work really hard on my little lake and I had people yeah. say, Oh, Mark's lost the lake. Fish it when you want. Or, yeah. Go with this. And, yeah. Oh, it's, it's just, you know what? I, I just wore off a duck's back, you know, you know, I yeah. think it's, yeah. it's, it's, it, it's all, uh, you know, it sounds arrogant when you say they're just jealous. That sounds very arrogant. Like, are they? Because I don't think anyone's jealous of me. But I, I just, I know it's that. I know it's there's some little resentfulness. And no one's, I'm not perfect. No one's, I don't walk no. around lording it up. I, not, I, no. I, I, I do a lot for, all I'm trying to do is grow angling. Like, that's yeah, the weird thing. I'm, I'm just trying to promote it, especially other species, uh, trying to get youngsters in. So, I'm, I, I try, and it's just, I think there's a lot of sad uh, sort of yeah. people out there who don't see, they, don't, I yeah. think they see it as a, I think if you put yourself out there on videos, and in, obviously I've, I've been in magazines for you know, years, and mm. I think some people see it as a, it's like an ego thing, and it, it hasn't yeah. been with me, it's no, just really, been, honestly, it's been I, my job, I, uh, it's weird I, I, though. I, I, I spoke to so many quote unquote high profile anglers. So when I started out doing my little UK angler thing, no one would talk to me. Then people liked me. Then they hated me. Then they sort of liked me. Then they decided yeah. they didn't like me. Yeah. And then people started noticing me at what we were doing a little bit because we did it because we love to do it. And yeah. then some of the high, what are called the higher end anglers uh, are quite abrupt and rude. You yeah. know, and some of them have got real. So, which you, you come on things like this to, to you know, I see yeah. what you do with your all round angler page. You're always yeah. supporting people. You're yeah. quite, just you trying, know, just trying. Just trying. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. doing nothing wrong. I mean, I, I yeah. mean, I mean, the guys from my little UK team, we just laugh all the time. We get people saying that hook's not right, and then this isn't right, yeah. and, and yeah, oh. yeah, we, yeah, we do. But honestly, what you do, is, yeah. what I like, Rich, is that you talk to people. You're in a great group. I know that you do some great, you do great videos, and it's nice to see yeah. something other than yeah, the same. It's all, and it's all, it's all free. It's like we're not, we're not, we don't make videos and start going. We're, we're, we're giving no. it, we're, we're giving it that. to you. You know, we're giving it to <laughs> don't them. Don't get me on that. Jesus, <laughs> I know. Oh, I, I didn't realize, but I think it's, I think it's like you know, you. It's to say you get a hundred good comments, one one bad one, and you just you, the bad one plays on your mind, doesn't it? Yeah. It does, and and uh, yeah, it does. I, it's just how it is that you know you've got to rise everyone says to me just rise above it keep smiling yeah, and exactly. that's I all i'm gonna do you know and, and uh so I yeah anyway, some... not 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 don't want to bring negative vibes but the last no, couple think... of weeks it's just you just get tired of it I, saw, don't you, yeah, I think with rich it's like, like if you let them get you it gives them something it's like they want to get a reaction and like, yeah, i get people yeah. i don't lie i just tell the truth and i'm not trying to impress yeah. anyone i'm just myself so yeah. i'm quite free speaking but people always trying to catch you out or trying to make you look bad or make you sort of yeah. say something that they think, oh, you've said it. And you think, Jesus, man, yeah. like, we're just, yeah. we're just trying to... Well, okay, Rich, you've got a couple of questions coming through. Don yeah. Irving, tench fishing, the biggest and best way to catch them? Uh, oh, so uh, I found every lake's different uh, with tench, but on, on sort of the, say, like gravel pit tench fishing, where a lot of the big tench are, or... Uh, 
like you won't beat worm and castor, red maggot, worm cast. If you go with like the natural baits, uh, like there's a little like chuck the worm kebab rig I've used. Uh, so I use a feeder, trying to explain it. So like helicopter setup feeder, uh, feeder would be plugged with a uh, worm like compost. You can buy it. So just soil, but you can buy like a worm compost. Uh, and then I'll add chopped worm to that. That gets packed in the feeder, maybe some casters. And uh, then, yeah, a little worm kebab. So just hair rigging like three, four sections of worm. Uh, and then spod like over the top, I'd probably spod just soil, caster and more chopped worm. So you don't need a lot of bait for tench either, not on a lot of lakes. So people go a bit mental with it because uh, their feeding mm. spells quite short. So, but natural, what I'm trying to say is natural bait, 100%. Uh, they're, it's expensive. But, but I'll tell you, the, the best tench anglers out there, what separates them is the money, if they spend money on bait. They, right. will, they, will, they will spend money on casters, money on worm, and it, it is the game changer. 100%. You can, you can cast out a you know, like carp fishing, you catch tench on boilies, don't you, and all that. But I'll tell you, if you're after tench and, and big tench, just, you know, find those clear spots and just give them that sort of wormy caster mix, red maggot mix, feed them mix, darling. Yeah, definitely, like 100%. And I have a question. Richard Wells, big eels, most, no, big eels are the most neglected species. Yeah. Tell us how you would target these and the bait you would use for big eel. Oh, fellow Richards, uh, I would, uh, so I've, I've caught, big eels drive you mental. I mean, I've, uh, <laughs> I've, caught, uh, I've caught a few big eels, uh, uh, fresh dead baits, fresh dead baits, not frozen ones. Uh, so yeah, fresh rud heads, probably my favorite bait. Ooh, Needs to be heads. bleeding. Yeah, so like literally cut, cut a rud in half, it's gotta be fresh, not nice. Uh, and you want it pumping out the blood and just lip hooked, little size, sort of six hook. Uh, the hook shape's important, like a carp, a carp style wide gape hook, about size six or eight, not too big. Uh, barbless hook, wire, wire trace, definitely wire trace because they will bite through uh, braids uh, and a big and a running rig. But uh, you, they're, they're the, until you fish for eels, you think carp are clever, like big eels just differently. No, I've, I've never eaten this. No, differently. No, never. Big eels will, big eels, if they if there's any resistance, and I mean like, uh, just if they just feel your rod tip knock, they'll drop the bait. So you've got to have your rod, uh, like we call it snooker cueing. So the rod's pointing, you need directly at your bait. And I use a, a certain uh, like drop off indicator. It's called a rollover. So the, uh, it basically it's a, a, an eel angler developed it. So it's got like a as as the eel picks up, there's a ball bearing, and it's and it lifts the arm up. So there's there's basically there's no resistance. They're called oh, rollovers. Man. They're game changer. But uh, strong. I use carp rods, fifteen pound mono, like no really? messing around for big eel. Yeah, unbelievable fight. The fight off like a five or six pound eel is tug of war. It is tug of war. Like, Nothing can prepare you for it, honestly. They're just they're they're the, probably the hardest big fish I've caught. Uh, that memorable fish would be like my yeah, the six pound plus eel. Like yeah, the time and 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 chat. Like you learn the hard way with eel fishing. Yeah. You learn, you really learn the hard way. You're not just going to start eel fishing and catch yeah. them. It's it's just every evening or every night you do it. You're you're because you've hurt because you've been turned over by them uh yeah it's fascinating i mean it's, it sounds, yeah. it sounds really frustrating <laughs> it sounds like mega, a mega, oh, mega frustrating i mean i fished one lake with some big i knew it got big eels in and i still haven't caught one out there and i've had three chances in probably i don't know 20 like sessions and my sessions would be eight o'clock in the evening to one in the morning so you've just in lots of blanks and then you miss then you miss your chance and yeah you drive home but yeah that's all part of it <laughs> so, yeah, big, eel, big eels are ultimate challenge definitely yeah, definitely okay so another question uh from good old chris hampton rich if you could only fish for one species for the rest of your days what would it be and why a good question that i was talking about <laughs> that the other day but it'd be a chub i think and simply 
I don't really like chub more than any other species, but uh, you can lure fish for them, you can mm. stalk them, uh, and you can just obviously winter, you can trot for them with a float, you can, you know, winter chub in, I like the cheese paste. Uh, it's, a chub is probably the most, you, you can fly fish for them. Uh, my mate fly <laughs> fishes for him, he catches, he's, he's caught loads of fly fishing on beetle, like, so, yeah, I think it has to be a chub. I know, I know you can't fish all year for them because they're in the rivers, uh, yeah. mate, you know, majority, but it's a chub because an all-round angler, you can, you can, I mean, you can fish, you can scale right down and trot, a, trot a, uh, some of the big chub get caught on like uh, size 18s, don't they? Single maggot. Yeah, Next yeah. minute, you got size four and a big, or you can boily fish with them. So yeah, chub, definitely. It has to be. Oh, yeah. uh, has yeah, to be. That's, that's unusual. I, I would have thought you would have said chub. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. quite good. Um, yeah. So ignore, ignore it's, he called, it's called, he calls himself Spanner Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> Spanner Curtis, but he calls himself Spanner nowadays. He says, Rich, big hooks or small hooks, small hooks when carp fishing. He's because a lot of people use it. So some carp anglers they like to use a big size four and a massive yeah. lead. I was going that way around. So what is your sort of view and, and tactic on that? Well, that's a really good question. I think people are definitely using uh, bigger hooks nowadays. Yes. Uh, I don't really know why, uh, yeah. but I, I'm quite old. I quite like a sort of size seven. I sit in the middle a lot oh, with it. I, but, cool, uh, yeah. yeah, well, I'm, I'm not, I've, I've never been into these sort of big hooks. I don't know if, if that's just because I'm stuck from that era where we didn't, I mean, but I think size six to me, generally. Size yeah, six. I mean, yeah, basically, I mean, I, hooks have got better. Hooks have got <laughs> better and hooks have got sharper. Back in the day, uh, smaller hooks were sharper. I, th I think that's, the, uh, you know, a size A would be sharper than a size six, 100%. Now, of course, big hooks, they've managed to, you know, machine them to the points. So the points are very sort of needly. So I think that's probably changed it. But I mean, and plus if you can sharpen everything now, can't you? You can hand sharpen them as well. Yeah, but I mean, the, like the hooks, the fox hooks I use, they're, they are every there's so many good hooks there now but the other thing to, with that question is like it does depend on the rig with a pop-up rig i would tend to use a bigger hook because the, you know the hooks the, the boilie is popped up the hooks not the hook there's no weight involved with the hook so and the boilie sits above it you can't see the, the fish can't see the hook as it goes down so pop-up rigs bigger hooks but for me like i do a lot of stalking and 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 i'm fishing spots the bait is obviously got to look like a natural bait because you you know it's, it's in the edge it's clear you know you're not going to catch of a pop-up in the edge very rarely uh so i tend to use a smaller like a quite a strong sort of size seven i use a short i think i use a short curve in a size seven just braids not less knotted that's my sort of stalking rig really simple well, I was going around the other year with just a size 10 on a pellet waggler, and I was speaking to John Irvin, who does the max fishing. Yeah. And he went, well, just go with float rods, put a little pe uh, band pellet on a, a size 10 hook, and just, just gently drop it when you see him feeding. I, yeah. I caught loads doing that, because it's just all yeah, done very definitely. lightly, very gently. Another yeah. question from Philip Lee. He's been doing really well, Philip. I see you big perch the other day, doing awesome, pal. He says, would river carp still be good target in winter due to the flow? Or would they theoretically still need to feed in the flow? I so, think, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you know where they are, I think that winter's a great time for river carp. If you know, if you know, if you know where they are, definitely. Like they feed more. He's, I know what you said. Like they need to feed more because of the flow. Hundred percent. You know, they're not like fat lake sort of carp. So winter. Some of my friends have caught a lot of their best river carp in the winter. But they, it's, it's locating them, isn't it? You've got to. Mm. You know that's the thing with river carp, but yeah, if you know they're in a stretch, definitely have them in the winter, especially if you can pre bait for them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because I one of our little consultants, Chris, he's on a little mission this year to catch uh, his first. Well, he's turned around and told everyone he's gonna catch his first river carp, so he's nice, all, he's, yeah. he's, he's he's tied himself in now, he can't not not catch one because everyone's oh, expecting I, I, it's all I spent uh quite a few years river carp fishing on the ooze and the neen and yeah. the lee. And uh, yeah, I loved it. Every takes a one toner, just be just like yeah. awesome. Yeah, so yeah, some some of my most some of my most memorable carp are twenty pound river carp. You know, not and I've yeah, I've caught big a lot of big carp, but some of my most memorable ones are middle of the night 
middle of a river, one mm. toner, and yet, yeah, you know, I had a, I, I remember I, catch, you know, just I phenomenal. Bet the power is meant, isn't it? I bet the yeah, power. usually it's a fun, most of the, I've, I've caught quite a lot of river carp, and it's quite a similar story. The takes just one toner, yeah, naught to 100 miles an hour, and this is from different rivers. And that you, you pick the rod up and it's just going and going and going and it just runs, runs. But it kind of, a lot of them burn them, so, they run so hard and then you just pump them back and then that's mm. it. So there's river carp, they fight. Like if, a lot of the ones I've caught, the fights have been epic, but it's all just been the, the first run. And after that, you've kind of got them really. They've burnt themselves out. What about, set, what about I mean, Chris is going to ask a couple of questions, but in regards to your basic river carp setup, what would you say, just to, your go-to river yeah, carp? Yeah, yeah, real simple. So they're not going to be as wise as, you know, lake, sort of pressured lake fish. So uh, definitely just simple lead clip, you you know, uh, lead clip rig, uh, strong gear, really strong gear. You don't know what's in the river. So 20 pound stuff line, like 0.4 line. Uh, probably like 45 pound lead core, lead clip, three, four ounce lead and a simple, just a simple snowman rig because uh, obviously nuisance fish in the river, bream and stuff. So, you know, probably like, yeah, big hook and uh, an 18, <laughs> a 20 and an, a 20 miller with an 18 mil pop up on top yeah. and you'd yeah. have a size four, a size four wouldn't even look big. So big, if you've not got nuisance fish, just... You don't yeah. need to. Yeah, you're gonna get, big, you're gonna get chuffed, can you? I think yeah, all the time with a full yeah, big chuff. bigger, bigger, yeah, kind of scaled up, scaled up sort of carp rigs, uh, and yeah, the fights are going to be aggressive. Uh, but yeah, it's really. I mean, I, we, I had a little go last year uh, on the broads. I've never had a broadland carp. Uh, it's a rare, rare fish, uh, but I sort of got an idea where a few are. So maybe this year, uh, I would love one. I mean, not, you know, ten pounder. That'd be fish of a lifetime. So, yeah, broadland carp for me, and that's how I'll fish for them. Yeah, just because it's full of bream. It is, you know, if you didn't fish big, big gear, you just you become you bream, all, bream all day long. Yeah. Uh, yes. Another quick question uh, from Dan. I'm going to call you Dan Curtis, even though he's called Spanner Curtis today. Who has been the biggest influence in your fishing? It's been a been a lot as you, as you sort of get older, isn't there? There's a I mean probably John Wilson as a kid watching mm, all the perfect. John Wilson so, over, over. so yeah watching go and, and and being obviously I'm from Norfolk so I, I met him in his tackle shop quite yeah. a few times uh and thought we were going to rod fish together and then he uh went to Thailand it never happened I always uh a uh, bit of a shame but yeah and uh, Chris Yates uh, uh as I got into my carp fishing Rob Malin Rod Hutchinson uh mm -hmm. and then uh I suppose more recently it's been uh, like Terry Lampard who passed away unfortunately but top specimen hunter uh, there's other specimen hunters I, I probably you know pike anglers Neville Flicklin and, and guys like that. so he, I've got cool. a lot of books from a lot of I'm, I'm a I'm like a jack of all trade I sort of fish for a bit of everything but you know some of these guys who have just fished for eels or just fished for tents you know they're the masters so you, you know you might as well read their books because that's all they've done you know they're you know give them a barbel rod or carp rod they, they don't really know but uh so yeah they're, they're they've all been influencers as well and you know i suppose they've just found one species and they've dedicated all their angling time to it so yeah but they yeah. know a lot they know a lot about that species yeah, I mean, I've watched it before, like, when I've been down my little lake, I said, I've seen guys tench fishing and, and they're blanking, they're not catching anything. And I, what I call a tench angler turned up. Yeah. It was there for three hours, caught three tench and went home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Yeah, watching, yeah, watching. I mean, I remember, like, I've not barbel fished a lot because uh, the barbel near me, they all got ottered uh, when I moved back here. So to, for me to go barbel fishing, you're going up, you're traveling like three hours. So you're going to the trends, uh seven or somewhere so i've been up the trent a few times and it's you know it's sort of like carp fishing up there to be fair so it doesn't feel out of place but i remember yeah. going with my mates and you know got our rods out uh put a, i think we bait dropped and put some we had we had about five barbel we thought yeah you know, we've done all right i watched this guy turn up opposite us and catch five barbel in an hour and mm. I was like, he's different level. And and I went and spoke to him, and he yeah grew up on that river, 
he no, had, spot, uh, no the tactics. He course. just knew it. He was fishing completely. He was fishing nothing. Casters and yeah, just a brilliant River Trent match angler who made barbel fishing look made us look like we thought we were we were okay. But so on that yeah, uh, you know, I, it's just fascinating really if you get. There's there's some real masters out there, of, 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 you know. Obviously, so some there's some very well known carp anglers, aren't there? But there's some master like some of the people on like my group, you know, the all round angler group. You've got, you know, you got, I won't embarrass what, but there's a guy on there, and he's the amount of big perch he has caught is unbelievable. Embarrass the way, embarrass him. Andy Cheatham, and and the Andy, he's a lovely guy, and like his perch pictures, no one's no one's close to, you know, he's. <laughs> You know, and again, he, I think he travels, I'm sure he's from Manchester way, but he's travelled to rivers three or four hours away to pre-bait. And, you know, really? it's, no, it's no different to what like a top carp angler, obsessive yeah. carp, but, you know, the perch he's caught, uh, you know, phenomenal. Uh, and yeah, in, in, yeah, so I love all that. Yeah, Quick one from Carl L. May, a good friend of ours. Have you ever fished Heselden Mill for barbell? No, I haven't. I, I know it on the Wensum. No, I have. Uh, I have visited it about once in my life. I've never fished it. I think uh, there might still be a barbel in there. It might be the only barbel in the Wensum, but no, <laughs> apparently. But I've never fished it. But uh, yeah, I remember seeing it. Lovely. I remember people. I think were swimming in there as well. But yeah, I know. I know what he means. Yeah. So, Rich, just a quick one. So, so. Tell us about your all-round angler page, your group that you've been doing uh, recently. Yeah. I've been okay. following it. And the pictures are great on there, and you, I know you do like a quite a regular little competition for people, yeah. and yeah. you're really supportive. So, how's that yeah, thing going? Uh, so it's great. So yeah, we we set up. Uh, so I've got a YouTube channel called All Round Angler, and uh, I've got my own Facebook page, my own you know big following on Instagram. Brilliant. But say the names. Just, Say the names and people will know what they are. Yeah, Rich will be on Insta. Uh, give us a follow. And my Facebook page is just, uh, well, I can't even accept members on there. But the group is because it's full. Uh, but the group, so I, basically my Facebook page was full up. I didn't want to go as a like page. Uh, so I set up this group page, all around angler group page. And it's been brilliant. Yeah, loads of anglers from all over the UK. I think we've got, I think there's several from out, I think 10% now are worldwide on there. So, but we've got some really good anglers on there and all sorts of youngsters are on there. Yeah. So we set that up uh, and been brilliant. I do little competitions, uh, yeah. you know, I try and get people engaged and yeah, it's, that has been refreshing. Uh, I think we've got sort of 4,000 now following yeah. it. Uh, it was just one yeah. Sunday afternoon. I just, I, I'm not, I told you, you know, I'm not good with technology, but I just <laughs> sat there and oh, I sat well. there and thought I'll, I'll try it and, yeah, next thing people like it, and uh, yeah, it's growing quickly, and yeah, it's brilliant. Fresh brilliant. Fresh it's nice yeah. breath of fresh air. Cause you know oh, what? Yeah, I'm, I'm, it, I'm, it, I'm, it, I never see any um, never see anything horrible on there. I've never seen no, any. It's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, I mean, it's I'm the only pretty good. But on your one, I've not seen anything. No, Which, no, it's been a good one. I've been, I've just uh, yeah, it's been a good one. Uh, been quite a positive group. Uh, so yeah, that's not been stressing me too much. It's been people catch fish, you know, the post or like I think people one thing I've noticed uh on there is people are a little bit uh, scared to ask questions. Like mm -hmm. but I think as like the admin or something, it's kind of like I kind of ask questions and people you can see it's a question they, they would probably like like to ask. So yeah, but they don't want to say, oh, should I use a size so and so hook for a barbel or but they, they should just ask because these oh, these are all nice guys. These aren't hey, yeah, these are good guys. They'll say, Yeah, use that or I've yeah. done really well using these. So I think one thing I'll do is ask ask questions myself. Yes. Yeah. Because I know I know, you know, you know, I think people do they're a little bit shy on there right. about asking. Just get on there and ask as many questions as you yeah. can. There's so many good there are guys on there to help. There's some really good guys on there to help. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah there's, definitely, there's definitely a good attitude on there. When I often, I'll pop on there a is. Yeah. And I was, it's, nice, it's nice to see the kids. It's nice to see different people catching different things. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And, you, um, and, it's, and it's, not, uh, it's not about who catches, you know, the biggest perch or the biggest okay. tent. It's not, it's like someone like, he's, he's been, he's just started perch fishing and he, and he says, 
I'm over the moon. I caught this one pound perch today, and everyone's like, "Yeah, well brilliant, mate. Well done, mate." You know, it's not. It's not a who's got the biggest. Which no, no, you know, it's not like that. It's because uh, we're all at different places, aren't we? Or angling, and uh, so that's I mean, the nice it, thing about it. Yeah, that's that's only carp in stand for what for me is you see the the people are sometimes a bit negative to each other on the carp angling side of yeah. things but yeah. most of them are quite good i mean i think if you surround yourself with good people good attitudes and good yeah. sort of vibe yeah. it makes fish so much more nicer and if, i think yeah. if people are negative to you or to any of your angling you know as an angler yourself just delete them and then once they're yeah. gone you ain't got to worry about them yeah. and that's yeah. just yeah, that's on. why I think. I think that. Yeah. Yeah. Around yourself with positive. I'm not the most positive person you've ever met. Honestly, I'm yeah, super positive. Yeah. Because life's too short to be miserable. So <laughs> this is why on. you sort of you start thinking why, you know, going back to it. But why, if people are following you, and never liking what you do, never <laughs> commenting, you sort of think, well, why what? are you following me? Yeah. Why are you? What they obviously, but they, some of them are your biggest like followers. That's the weird thing, yeah. because they probably they they they're obsessed in a in a weird way. And but yeah, I'm starting to think, well, just just delete them because I'd rather they they no then they're not they're no there's no positive vibes coming off them, is there? They so bring up people, they bring other people down as well, Richie. The yeah. thing is, is, you sound a lot like me, so. Even though when someone says negative or makes a knock, you know when a little comments normally when they go that they do that emoji where they go, mm. yeah, yeah. You know, and he goes, what have I done wrong? Like, I don't think I've done nothing uh -huh. wrong. You go home and then sit and think, well, what, what was that about? What have I? And then you start, yeah. then you start most obsessing about it. So I've been sort of just got to the stage now. Is I mean, I'm no special angler. I'm not a great angler. I just like doing fishing. Yeah. And yeah. you get people just have to make a comment about. He's done that wrong. I said, well, don't be horrible about it. Explain. Yeah. Learn yeah. for the next thing. But they, they yeah. just don't want to do that. So just, you mm. know, I think when it does well, they just get jealous and, you know, that's yeah. us. Bless you, Rich. So the little guys in there, all my little, all my lads in there supporting you, mate. So they'll all be yes. over there. <laughs> Rich, mate, so moving forward, then what's the future bring for you? You got anything planned big for the future or are you just going to keep going with a YouTube channel or? Yeah, so we were, we we're going to, uh, uh, yeah, going to have a good go with YouTube this year. Uh, we've got some uh, got some really cool videos to do. Like really, we have, it's, it, we've had some nice people uh, say, "Oh, you got to come here, Rich, and got a film here." We've had, we've had a couple of good invites. Uh, so yeah, we're also going to get uh, a few guests on the channel. So it'll be not just you know me fishing for barb. Well, I'll, I'll probably I'll, I'm going to try and pick some of the like I say some of them sort of masters and yeah, and definitely. actually go out with them and I'll be more of like the student, like, yeah. you know, and I think uh, people might like that because I'm not going to be afraid to sort of say, well, why do you do that? And, you know, and I'll say, what's your best, yeah, what's your memorable, what's the most memorable perch or, you know, yeah. why do you, you know, and so we've got, a few, we're going to do a few guest ones, hopefully, and yeah, just keep, uh, keep filming. I'm, I've got a little, uh, I brought myself a little vlogging camera. So I've done a couple of little vlogs now, which yeah. is, but they've been quite simple. I just, uh, you know, because obviously I can't have my cameraman with me every time I go fishing. So yes. if I pop down the river and now catch a fish, I could do a little little five minute vlog. Uh, so that's quite cool. Uh, but yeah, I'm filming with, uh, got a, a couple of big sort of filming sessions uh, with Fox uh, to look forward to. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's it. And the fish really, I've got a week off now. I've got a lot of work to do this week and then the fishery sort of season starts the following week. It's a bit weird though, obviously with lockdown, so it's just locals. Uh, so hopefully in April, uh, I can have like, you know, my sort of main holiday guys come and travel back up. Uh, so yeah, it's a little bit uncertain still, isn't it? But I think by April, it's looking good for, yeah, uh, hopefully you, know, not, you know, we've been lucky as anglers, we've been lucky, but as fishery, as a fishery owner, it's been a little bit, it's not been easy and, and it's still there's still a little bit of uncertainty about you know when can we actually go fishing and night fish yeah. and travel and, yeah. and i and as a as i run carp lakes that's obviously all i'm getting asked at the moment and i, I don't know yeah i bet you I get one part of all the time about getting on your venues all the time don't you yeah it's been uh the other thing that's been crazy is that uh the uh, french fisheries obviously a lot of people aren't going to france this year because mm. of, of what's happened so uh I've never had so many inquiries and it is mainly from people who are not going to France and they're all going to be fishing in England this year. And I don't know where, 
there's not enough lakes. They're really you're talking <laughs> tens of thousands of lakes, uh, tens yeah. of thousands of carp anglers. I don't know how many thousands go to France a week, but just imagine yeah. they're all here. And you start yeah. thinking of number of swims on carp lakes, and it just doesn't. Nah, you've I've got, got you know, you, it's it's crazy. It's going to be cra It's going to be crazy busy on day on day ticket waters this year. I, I, I honestly yeah. not not running. They're going to be so busy. They are. I mean, I, my little one. I'm quite funny. I've got like thirteen pegs, but I've yeah. sectioned it out. I only allowed six people on because they've got their own bit yeah. of space. I don't like people being on top of each other. And uh, yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite lucky. I mean, you, honestly, you would love my little venue. It's like it a nice great. venue. Bit. We'll come, up, we'll come up and do some film. We'll come up and have a laugh there, do some filming. But you'll see carp, good swim pasture, but because it's a silty, 13 foot deep, weedy kind of venue, it's swim yeah. like pasture. It drives you insane, man. I've seen some of the carp yeah. in there for the yeah. past few years. Everyone comes down. I mean, if you catch one this big, like uh, that sort of size, you're, you're over the moon because it's so, so hard to catch. But yeah, uh, you'd love it, Dan. Yeah, 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 I love what. I think my, like, one you know my sort of favorite fishing for whatever species doesn't matter what it is is that visual seeing them visual fishing yeah. sight fishing seeing the fish getting excited and then trying to catch <laughs> it you know and that that's you know that's you know that's i mean carp fishing is great for that isn't it but you know seeing a chub in a river you know i've yeah. stalked pike I've, I've you know you watch a pike i've seen pike just laying there and you yeah. know you're trying not to but yeah i love that sort of fishing yeah well, Rich, mate, I, I appreciate you being. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I'm going to let you go in a record. I know you've had a busy day, Junior. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Late yeah. And stuff today. I appreciate coming on having a chat. Um, everyone else who's on there should get over to you all around Angler, get on your YouTube channel and get behind yeah. you because they are really good, mate, and I do enjoy awesome, the mate. difference. Um, and then what we do, you know, it may be in a, in a bit later on, uh, you know, once you've um, released your new videos and you come back maybe at four or five, six weeks, then have a little Definitely, chat with us. Yeah, lovely, it's been really nice. No, it's been really yeah, good. Yeah, it's been, and, been, a good and, yeah, it's been great. It's been, cool, it's, yeah. been <laughs> <laughs> it's been really cool. No, it's nice. It's really cool. No, I love it. Thanks so much for having me. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure because you're so polite and humble and you're, you know, like I said, there's a lot of uh, well-known anglers out there. And I'll be straight. They're absolutely the arseholes. I shouldn't say that, but I can't. No, some not, are. Some are. I'm happy. Some are so arrogant. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, I've worked with, I've worked with most of them. Uh, it's, it's weird. It's, uh, I've seen people change. I've seen people, yeah. uh, you know, who are, who were, I, I worked with at the start of their career. And then now, now they're, in their eyes they're big time and <laughs> yeah, they're just yeah, not yeah. and they, 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 the the best the best anglers the one the best say talk about carp anglers i've worked with the best ones are, are very humble very yeah. humble that the, exactly. their their fishing speaks for itself and yeah. they don't need to it's 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 the ones trying to make a name yeah uh that and and when they do, because you you can you can invent yourself as an angler, if, and, and it is possible now. And but I think deep inside they know they know they're not they're not. So they I think it's a bit of a facade, and and yeah, it goes to their head when they get accepted. It, it's uh, but I've met a few. It does. I've I've I know a few very rude guys in in the trade, but. There's so many lovely guys and they are humble. The best guys are humble. You know, you know, I don't need to say they are the best. There's a lot of genuine, real good yeah. guys out there. But yeah, it's funny, isn't it? How it, it's the same as anything. They do, they just get a little bit, it just goes to their head and, they, and then they unfortunately become rude. And I've yeah. seen it, I've seen it at shows. I've seen, I'm seeing them being rude to, you know, Joe blogs, uh, part of seen them be rude at shows, some of these guys. And it's like, you know, you're, What's, what, what are you doing? Yeah. I've, always, I've, always, I've always said to the guys when I chat with Chris now, I say to him, what annoys me, without being rude to people, what annoys me is when you're, you're, you're just starting out in your fishing career and you're supported by all your friends, your family, and all your little people. Yeah. And like, as you grow, they support you and support you. And you get to a stage, you suddenly, you, they support you all the way to the top and then cut them off. Yeah, you think, yeah. Well, that's what happens. Yeah. That's what happens. Friends, can't find a guy, enough yeah. guy. Um, come down my lake uh, a while back. Lovely guy, all polite to me, nice as pie. Fish for nothing, shut the lake for him. Really yeah. common. He had the little hut with a chimney burner and stuff, and he don't even talk to me now. I don't know why. I ain't done nothing wrong to him. He just don't know. I was like, why it's are you doing that? It is, it is, it is weird. Uh, 
Yeah, but it is weird. Such but... a social media, I suppose, Rich. It's how it is, isn't it, buddy? I just, I don't know. I just think they are. Uh, it's just you got to be. How you gotta remember when I say, remember where you come from. Remember that you exactly. were. Yeah, you know, we all started trying to tie a knot and getting entangled. I still do, but you still, yeah. you always I'm started out. It's I'm like, always <laughs> you know, it's just, I, I, I don't know. Like I, I still think I'm, I'm. I don't think I'm very good at fishing, but. I'll keep trying. You'll and, you know, I'll, 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 you'll go, what advice you got? So don't listen to me. That's the best advice I can I'm give you. Like no, I'm, I'm like that. I think I just try and keep it sort of real and I just try and inspire people. If I can catch like big fish, anyone can. That's how I look at it. You just oh, got to, you just got to want to do it. I mean, you've got to put a bit of effort in. Sometimes it's, sometimes you just got to put the effort in. And, yeah, and, I uh, think as long as you're enjoying it, as long as you're enjoying it. You've got to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. You've got to enjoy it. I mean, I do, I do this for fun, and people, I imagine, I'm quite lucky enough, some people just like to talk to me when I'm out and about, I'm quite fortunate, and I always talk to everyone, and people go, you will chat, you, Mark, you just like me, little videos, well, I wouldn't be no other way, I wouldn't know how to be any other no. way, you know, no. how I am now, no. like when I'm walking through B&Q with a piece of CLS on my shoulder, I'm exactly the same, yeah, and I definitely. think it's good to be positive, mate, and if you like fishing, you like fishing, so. Yeah, I love, I love it, I just love fishing, I love fishing, and I, I think the only reason I've, like, uh, caught some like decent fish or whatever is because I I quite like a challenge and it's mm. not that's not me that's not because I think I'm good I just quite like a challenge uh, yeah. so I took a bit of, and and that's and if you and then you and then you get the bug don't you I really want that big rote and and mm. so you then read up more and more and and uh, but that's that's uh, yeah I'm happy catching anything but I suppose the only reason I've gone down the sort of specimen route is just uh, purely uh, I had a challenge, challenge myself a little bit more and or go out of my comfort zone. I've all, I've often thrown myself out of the comfort zone. But yeah, I've had fun doing it, real good fun doing it. Now, if you're mate, not enjoying it, then yeah. Then... Mate, I think it's been awesome. It was really good, Richard. You've chatted about all sorts, which is nice. I mean, right, so, yeah. <laughs> and tarp, pike. There's still loads to talk about, but like I say, which are, um, we'll come we'll back. In... Yeah, come back. Give us a, it'll be, it'll be spring, won't it? Six weeks. Come back and you can, and, um, and you can yeah, tell us a bit we'll more a about the catch that we're not going to know about quite yet until oh, you'll yeah, be I'll show you that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> coming soon. Yeah, right. All right, mate. Take care. So, thank you, pal. Take care. Bye, cheers. Cheers. Right. Bye. Bye. Bless him. I'm uh, absolutely stoked, man. It was one of the nicest chats I've had. Um, internet's been sound. Uh, Rich was awesome. I like to say he's asked lots of questions. Fingers to Rich, a small questions you can pick at that guy's brain. So when we get him back on in in, in sort of six seven weeks time, uh, have some questions ready, some more questions, and really 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 pick the guy's brain because he's very humble, but he's got a lot more knowledge than people uh, than he lets on. And like I say, he does run an amazing amazing lake. So if you research Rich a little bit. Look what he's got uh, and how he manages his waters. You'll be very, very surprised. Uh, well, no, I'm not surprised. But, you know, if you don't know Rich or you just sort of get into the angling world, have a go and look research. Go to uh, All Around Angler, which is on the Facebook page. Um, like you said, you've got his YouTube. And the good thing about Rich's YouTube is not the same fish. I mean, I love carp. I catch carp all day a week. If I was able to catch them, I'd catch them all day a week. However, I absolutely love the fact that Rich's YouTube's got pipe, perch, chub, and it's just great to have um, a good a good chat with someone about anything. And that's what you can get about. Let's say we love all aspects of fish. You know, we love match fishing, river fishing, carp fishing, barbell, pipe, perch, run, everything. And that's what I like to talk about. So what we're going to do is we've got Dave Mutton coming up. You do not want to miss Wednesday, Dave Mutton. It's a great start to introduction of catfishing. You're going to love it. It's going to give some amazing advice. Uh, he's a real, real good guy, and then, like I say, we've got, we're going to get John back on. His face is, oh, bless you. Um, thing is coming on, uh, what's his name? Yeah, John Urban's going to come through on about next machine, and we've got Chris, we've got a few others, and we're going to get it all going on. Um, I'm really pleased that Richard's going to come back, which is great. Pretty good, Jules back on. But remember, with Julian, we meet to just hammer him with questions. He loves a question and he loves an answer, so we've got lots more coming up. Um, we've got still other. Pretty much well-known anglers that are still in the pipeline to come and join us as for live feeds. I'm really, really pleased that this one's gone a lot better than the others. Uh, well, no, the others have all been good. I want to get Mike Smith back so we can get on uh, talk about a bite of cancer a bit more because we missed out on that. I, I feel we, I don't think we've done Mike justice with our live feed. Anyway, guys, 
It's been awesome everyone, everyone here. I'm pleased to last week's work. Amazing Rich come on. Thanks for all your help guys. And as always, like I always, like I said, all my videos is with the UK Anglian ethos. Because when you want to bank, remember, encourage, educate, and inspire. God bless guys, stay safe. Ta-da.